indeed. Little pigs. Little pigs. Let me come in. Come on down, eat some of this shit. We'll tear your soul apart. October is one of my busiest times of the year with Monster Madness going on and AVGN and Portland Retro Gaming Expo and Halloween right around the corner. But I still make a little time to play the world's greatest mobile game, Raid Shadow Legends. Available on PC and mobile, build your party from a pool of over 750 plus unique champions and take them into battle against hordes of enemies. Test your metal against other players from around the world in PvP Arena or team up with them to take on Raid's colossal clan bosses. This month, Raid is asking us to look through our favorite or possibly least favorite champions to decide which ones we would rather kiss, marry, or kill. Not something I've ever really thought about, but hey, for fun, let's give it a shot. First off, we wouldn't want to kiss Versolf the Grim right on the um, mouth. Narma the Returned is someone I would probably marry, but only because they appeared before me after I solved a mysterious puzzle box. And I would definitely say Norog for kill. I do not want anything to do with that hog. Well, enough monkeying around as time's running out for you to get the legendary champion, Sun Wukong, for free. He's absolutely bananas in both PvP and PvE, so you don't want to miss out on adding the Prime Primate to your champion collection. Just log into Raid seven different days between now and October 23rd, and you'll have this Monkey King at your beck and call. And all month, new players that use my link or scan the QR code on screen will receive a free starter pack worth $30, including all this incredible in-game loot. Again, just click my link in the description below or scan the QR code on screen to get awesome in-game loot. It's that easy. This month, we're looking at TV shows, celebrating the time-honored trope of the Halloween episode. So I'm picking out some of my favorite Halloween episodes by decade. Last time I talked about the 70s with the Happy Days Halloween, and this time it's the 80s. It's the first decade I was alive. Well, technically I was alive in the 70s, but I was just a fetus. But anyway, when it comes to the 80s, there's a lot to choose from. There's an episode of ALF called Some Enchanted Evening. As you may know, ALF is an alien and he hides out in the Tanner household. But Halloween is the one time a year he's able to be among other people, pretending to just be a person in a costume. The other Tanner household from Full House also had their share of Halloween episodes. As far as the 80s are concerned, two that come to mind are It's Not My Job and Divorce Court. Knight Rider had one called Halloween Night, and the crazy thing about it is that it's a tribute to Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho, but not just a reference, the plot actually takes the characters into the realm of Psycho. Michael Knight, the David Hasselhoff character, actually meets Norman Bates. Oh, but excuse me, this is Norman Baines. And he actually visits the Psycho House. Yes, I mean the actual Psycho House. If you didn't know this crossover existed, well, now you do. Tales from the Dark Side, already spooky, had an episode called Trick or Treat. MASH had Trick or Treatment. Different Strokes had A Haunting We Will Go. Chips had Rock Devil Rock. Laverne and Shirley had Ghost Story. The Facts of Life had The Halloween Show. Charles in Charge had Trick or Treat. And the first Roseanne Halloween episode called Boo aired in 89. But the one that I always remember best from the 80s was Garfield's Halloween Adventure. Just to clarify, it's not actually an episode, it's a special, but it was obviously part of a franchise and preceded the show Garfield and Friends by only a few years. It was also part of an annual tradition of having a Garfield special every year, sometimes twice a year. There were 12 total, including a Thanksgiving and a Christmas special. The first four aired every October near Halloween, but only the fourth one was actually Halloween themed. Now, while I grew up with it, I actually remember more vividly the comic book version, which I still have here in my collection. It's almost exactly the same as the animated version. Every panel is near identical, 
but it seems the comic version is more obscure. Any Google search leads you to the animated version, so I can't find much info to confirm which came first, but judging from the copyright date, it seems they were produced together, coming out around the same time. We know the animated version came out on October 30th, 1985, and it was originally called Garfield in Disguise before they changed it to Garfield's Halloween Adventure, which is far more suitable. Jim Davis, as we know, was the writer, but the animated version was directed by Phil Roman. Lorenzo Music voices Garfield as usual. As it starts up, Garfield's trying to sleep in. It's the early hour of the morning, the TV's been left on, and suddenly the day's programming begins and wakes him up. That's already a throwback right there. In the old days, the TV channels would actually stop running for the night. I mean, isn't that weird to think of now? Anyway, the show is Binky the Clown, who really irritates Garfield. He makes Garfield do jumping jacks. This clown's like some kind of drill sergeant, and he has some kind of brainwashing ability to make Garfield do whatever he says. Then again, Garfield's also a cat that walks upright and thinks in coherent sentences. But then after Garfield summons his own will and shuts the TV off, he realizes something. Didn't Binky just say there's going to be candy tonight? So he turns the TV back on. Binky tells him it's Halloween night and he has to get in shape so he can go trick-or-treating. And of course, that's what motivates Garfield to get his ass up. And then the opening credits start up. These always had a good catchy jingle. This one's called This Is The Night, performed by Louis Rawls. After this, Garfield talks about how Halloween is the best holiday, which I agree with. As a cat, he gives his reasons that he hates pine needles, dumb bunnies, fireworks, and annoying relatives. On the contrary, my cats always loved pine needles, and any bunnies outside would only have them scratching at the window. But Garfield is, of course, a cartoon cat who loves indulging in anything that's edible. So he says, boom, you go out and get candy, simple as that. And that's one way to sum up the holiday. But as a kid, I would say, boom, you get presents with Christmas. Very debatable which was the best holiday. You know, Garfield's got me thinking here. Hmm, maybe I'll give you an answer by the end. So Garfield takes a nap and then wakes up at sundown in time for trick-or-treating. But first, he needs to find a costume. So he goes over to John, who's carving a pumpkin. Garfield scares him and sends the pumpkin flying in the air, only to land on John's head. Then John tosses it aside and it lands on Odie's head. It's the usual shenanigans. Then Garfield tries to scare Odie, but instead Garfield gets scared by Odie's pumpkin head. But soon after, Garfield has a big idea. He decides if he takes Odie with him trick-or-treating, he can get twice the candy. Of course, being the glutton he is, he's not planning on leaving much or any candy for Odie. So he takes Odie up to the attic and rummages around looking for costumes. And that's another great tradition, looking through all those old boxes, finding old decorations and costumes. Garfield tosses a bunch of random accessories, which accidentally land on Odie, it seems. So Garfield looks over and once again is scared unintentionally by Odie. Then he finds a mother load of costume parts and he breaks into tune singing, What Should I Be? This is a fun sequence as it shows Garfield trying on different costumes, appearing as a vampire, an evil cat, and an alien creature. It's interesting to see how the illustrations differ in the comic version. The evil cat is definitely the creepiest in both. But Garfield settles on the pirate costume along with Odie, so he starts speaking in a pirate voice. He threatens John, steals his lasagna, and goes out the door. Typical Garfield. Then we see the neighborhood at night with trick-or-treaters as Garfield sings a pirate song. I like the simplicity of the backgrounds. This is another good scene that invokes memories of Halloween walking around the neighborhood at night. I have some varying memories of trick-or-treating in the daytime, but also at night. I'm not sure which was more common. I know night was never as safe, but that always felt more like Halloween to me. Louis Rawls starts singing again, the song titled Scaredy Cat. Garfield's going around showing Odie how he's not scared by any of the other costumes and how none of it is real. But then he lifts up a ghost sheet to reveal a giant hairy foot. It goes without any explanation. You're left to just assume it was a real monster going around the neighborhood. The same thing happens again when he removes a monster mask only to reveal the exact same face. 
The artwork in the book here is actually a tad creepier. This goes on for a bit until they arrive at somebody's door. With the spooky bits out of the way for now, Garfield threatens someone to give them more than just one piece of candy. And they oblige. Maybe if Charlie Brown was an asshole, he'd have more luck and wouldn't just get rocks. It's the nice guys who get shit on. Then they come to a dock where Garfield has another bright idea. If they can get to the other side of the water, they can get more candy, assuming the houses over there have candy, which the other trick-or-treaters can't get to. Garfield has a brief moral dilemma where he thinks maybe he should share the candy with those who are less fortunate. But of course, he says, nah, it's just a spoof of the cliche, and we all know Garfield will always be just as greedy as ever. So they take a boat to the other side, and this is where things take a serious turn. They lose the oars and get stranded. I always thought this was more unsettling than anything else that happens. Just the idea of getting lost while trick-or-treating. Just think being far from your home and not knowing how to get back. So they come to an old house complete with random lightning flashes. This is where the real meat of the episode begins. Inside, they meet an old man sitting in a chair who tells them a scary tale. I especially liked the illustrations of him in the comic, how they were drawn so dramatically. The story is that a hundred years ago on a dark and stormy night, a bunch of pirates hid some treasure on the spot where the house stands and they signed a declaration with their own blood that they would come back in a hundred years to reclaim the treasure, on the stroke of midnight, of course. At the end of the tale, the man mysteriously disappears, and then Garfield and Odie leave. But oh crap, the boat is gone, leaving no possible way to get back. And even worse, the candy's gone too. Just then, a ghost ship appears, and out of the water comes the glowing skeletal ghosts of the pirates. The animation effect looked awesome when I was a kid, and it still looks awesome today. I really don't know how they did the glowing effect. I also liked the way they're illustrated in the book. It's very morbid and unsettling. So Garfield and Odie hide in the house, and the rest is a big cat and mouse chase, or, or more like a ghost cat and dog chase. One of the creepiest bits is when they hide in a cabinet, thinking maybe the ghosts don't see them, but they pop in face to face. The comic panel of that was actually pretty striking. So this scene here is about as close as they get to jump scares. So they run out to the docks and fall in the water. Garfield struggles to stay afloat, mentioning he can't swim. There's something disturbing about it, seeing Garfield almost drown, and the ominous music that goes with it always unsettled me as a kid. Especially the comic panel as Garfield gasps for air. Man, that's messed up. Well, luckily, Odie saves him, they find the boat with their candy, and they go home. The terror ends there, but in the comic, when they open their door, the ghosts are behind it. They chase them up a tree, and that's when they realize Odie has a piece of the treasure, a ring on him. So he drops it to the ghosts, and poof, they're gone. I think the added bit made it much scarier because of the idea that the ghosts could follow them home. It's one thing when you're in the haunted house, but when you're away from the haunted house and they're still on your tail, that's something else. It's the cliche, it's the final jump scare, it just had to happen. But I guess they just didn't have room for it in the cartoon. So then Garfield decides, after all, he has a change of heart and gives Odie his half of the candy. Of course, we like seeing Garfield as a total greedy scumbag, but for all of Odie's loyalty and help, he definitely earned it. So, with the topic of greed, I think it makes for a good moral to go along with the Halloween setting. And, as a closing note, a pirate movie appears on the TV, and Garfield shuts it off. It's a great episode, or TV special, whatever. I like how something supernatural actually happens. Garfield doesn't wake up and find it's all a dream. They actually got chased by pirate ghosts. The way it happens is kind of jarring. It takes a left turn into something dark, and that's what I like about it. Jim Davis was quoted as saying he wanted it to at least scare four-year-olds. Well, I was five, so I guess I was a little scared, maybe? This was one of the big staples of Halloween TV programming. It used to air along with the Charlie Brown Great Pumpkin special. When paired together, they nicely filled an hour time slot. To this day, I still like to watch them back to back. Why not? But for whatever reason, they stopped playing it on TV. 
And lately, even The Great Pumpkin has been having problems getting on TV. I guess it doesn't matter with the options we have today, but I do wonder why the Garfield one isn't as popular as Charlie Brown, despite having won a primetime Emmy for Outstanding Animated Program. It just seems to have faded a bit from the public popularity, but I say, give it a watch. Have a double feature with Great Pumpkin. Oh, and is Garfield right about Halloween being the best holiday? Yeah, I think so. But for me, it's not really about the candy or about what you get. It's about what you do. Go to haunted houses, pick out a costume, uh, or make your own, plan a party and decorate. It's such a good creative outlet, and I think Garfield's Halloween adventure taps into that.